Good evening, Mr. Bowie. Listen, we're already in a lot of trouble with the EPA. And if you stick around, we're gonna have to fill out a bunch of interdimensional commerce forms. So if you could relocate to New Jersey, or maybe Canada, you'd really be doing us a solid. That ought to do it. Thanks very much, Ray. Are you a god? Half on my mother's side. Well, we're not very religious about it. We really only go once or twice a year on high holidays. Then... Hello, I'm Andrew Heaton, and you're watching Econ Pop, the show that sifts through the haystack of popular culture to find the needle of economics within, and then stabs you with it. Ghosts. They're terrible. They come into our houses at night, drink all of my roommate's beer, leave dirty plates in the sink, and then forget to put the toilet seat down. Ghosts are responsible for nearly all of the things which irritate my roommate, who unfairly blames these clearly paranormal shenanigans on me. But it's ghosts. So who am I going to call? If there's something strange in the neighborhood, who you gonna call? That's right, my friend Jim. Jim never hassles me about leaving dishes in the sink. Also, he likes Ghostbusters, which is one of my favorite films. A 1980s classic which explores ectoplasm, Sumerian gods, entrepreneurship, and the pitfalls of overzealous government regulators. Entrepreneurship is about alertness to opportunity, taking risks, finding innovative solutions to problems, and hopefully making a profit at the end of it all. At the beginning of the film, our heroes are uniquely aware of the problem of ghosts but they're not doing much about it because they're uncomfortable, cushy academic jobs. Personally, I like the university. They gave us money and facilities. We didn't have to produce anything. You've never been out of college. You don't know what it's like out there. I've worked in the private sector. They expect results. Once they're forcibly jettisoned into the private sector, they decide to take a risk and start their own company. Taking risks is a crucial aspect of entrepreneurship. Most startup companies fail. For example, my idea for a one-time use disposable ladder company failed horribly. Seriously, a lot of people died. To start a business at all is a risk, because in most instances you have to leave what is normal and comfortable for something that will probably fail. It's also a big financial risk. Dan Aykroyd's character, Ray, mortgages his house in order to get a loan to start the Ghostbusters. If the business had failed, he would have gone bankrupt and lost everything. You're never going to regret this, Ray. My parents left me that house. I was born there. You're not going to lose the house. Everybody has three mortgages nowadays. None of the guys were guaranteed income on day one, as opposed to taking jobs as employees in established firms. But great risks can lead to great rewards. If the business succeeded, they would get to keep the profits. The Ghostbusters are also innovators. Ray and Egon invent devices to trap ghosts. Bill Murray desperately wants to sleep with Sigourney Weaver, and works diligently and creatively towards that end. Somehow, an entirely new industry, Ghostbusting, is born. And it works! They make money! and lots of it. Their first ghostbusting job at the hotel illustrates an important and often confused aspect of the market economy. It doesn't reward people for the amount of effort they put in, but in the value they create for others. $5,000? I had no idea to be so much, I won't pay it. Well, that's all right, we can just put it right back in there. Thank oh, you. Oh, we certainly can, no, Dr. Beckman. No, 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 All right, anything. Economists call this subjective value, and it's the reason shiny diamonds cost more than bread and water. Unfortunately for the Ghostbusters, their biggest obstacle wasn't getting enough customers to become a viable enterprise. It was the EPA, and, to a lesser extent, an interdimensional Sumerian god. You might think that, all in all, a malicious, super-powerful entity bent on destroying the world is worse, but you should also keep in mind that the Ghostbusters actually managed to defeat Gozer, whereas they only stalled Walter Peck. He's probably drawing a pension right now, I want to know more about what you do here. Frankly, there have been a lot of wild stories in the media, and we want to assess any possible environmental impact from your operation. Walter Peck is the avatar of snarky bureaucrats, the obsequious EPA official we'd all love to smack. His employer, the Environmental Protection Agency, was formed in 1970 by beloved U.S. President Richard Nixon's executive decree to counter pollution. 
what economists call negative externalities. Negative externalities are when some activity you're doing imposes costs onto unrelated third parties. Let's say that the proton packs used to capture ghosts produces smog. That's a negative externality. Resolving negative externalities is about trade-offs. Sometimes people talk about pollution like we can either have it or not. And that's true. We could ban all pollution if we banned all cars, tractors that harvest our food, and power plants that make our electricity. I'm disinclined to do so. So unless we want to bring back the Middle Ages, where we grow our own zucchini, use carrier pigeons to literally deliver tweets, and generally die around 35, there's going to be some smoke. We have to decide how do we best deal with these trade-offs. One problem with the EPA is that it changes the equation from economic trade-offs to criminals versus non-criminals. Peck doesn't simply threaten to tax the Ghostbusters for their emissions. He threatens to throw them in jail. Excuse me, this is private property. Shut this off. Shut these all off. I'm warning you, turning off these machines would be extremely hazardous. I'll tell you what's hazardous. You're facing federal prosecution for at least a half a dozen environmental violations. Now, either you shut off these beams or we shut them off for you. Further, EPA regulations tend to deal with public health via micromanagement. It's one thing for the government to say factories can only produce so many pollutants in the air or river. It's another thing to tell them exactly how they must go about achieving this. By creating complicated rules and regulations as to how businesses must operate, how often they must clean particular components, what sorts of machines they can use, which solvents, etc., we run the risk of stifling businesses from coming up with their own, possibly better, solutions to meet the quality of public health we want to achieve. For example, in 1975, the EPA mandated platinum-based catalytic converters for all cars to ensure that they met certain emission guidelines. American car manufacturers favored this approach because they had already put a ton of money in developing these catalytic converters themselves. Japanese car manufacturers had gone a different route, using alternate, more affordable technology. Their cars were already clean enough to meet EPA emission guidelines, but they were forced to adopt catalytic converters anyway, raising prices for American car buyers, reducing competition, and ironically wasting precious resources at the same time. In the film, the EPA shuts down the Ghostbusters, and by doing so releases a wave of ghoulish specters across the city. That's what economists call unintended consequences. In the end, everyone wants both a cleaner environment and innovation. The question is, in a world where everything has a cost, how do we best achieve both? As for me, next time my apartment is swarmed by poltergeists, who am I going to call? Not the EPA. The Ghostbusters. Or, more accurately, Dan Aykroyd. He's really into that stuff. And now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, Subjective Value, where we invite famous economists who weigh in with their own thoughts on the film. Today we have the man who coined the term entrepreneur himself, French classical economist Jean-Baptiste Say. Oh, 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 so you think you know so much about the Ghostbusters, eh, André? But did you know that Chevy Chase and Michael Keaton turned down the role of Peter Venkman, did you? No, no, did you know that Bill Murray had lived most of his lines, did you? No, no, did you know that Bill Murray is the third greatest comedic artist of all time after Jerry Lewis and Jacques Tati? No, no, you did not. Vive la Ghostbusters! Vive la France! Three stars. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're looking for more on entrepreneurship, externalities, and the economics of Ghostbusters, you can download the Econ Pop podcast with economist Steve Horwitz, Professor of Literature Paul Cantor, and myself, available on iTunes. <laughs>